as we head into week five of college football, it's time to take a look at where each team stands in the country. And this has been a very interesting season so far. So today we take a look at the power rankings and we're going to do it a little bit different. We're not going to rank all 134 teams. They're going to be in different tiers and we'll break down why each team is in their respective tiers. We're going to start with the 2025 teams. These are teams that are not doing very well and they have their sights on next year. Not saying that they can't compete in certain games this year, but it is time to focus on the future. If you ask my opinion, now some of them obviously have, a chance to move up to a different tier, but we start with teams like UTSA, uh, very disappointing so far, and that's kind of been something that's surprising a little bit because we expect the Roadrunners to maybe compete in the AAC. That just hasn't been the case. UAB is kind of the same thing in that conference. This is not a team that I expected to struggle as much as it did, and it's been very, uh, very frustrating to watch that program if you're a Blazers fan. Utah State also in that same bucket there where you're looking at a team that I think had high expectations and obviously the news of Blake Anderson being let go is going to affect what this team is looking like and so far it's been a fairly disappointing the teams though that have made a little bit more waves in terms of this category Mississippi State and that's not really surprising because Jeff Levy took over and you knew they were going to have to focus towards the future FAU has been disappointing under Tom Herman Teams that aren't very surprising in this group, Kennesaw State, Akron, Troy, Air Force, those are teams that you kind of knew, Wyoming as well, you kind of knew, oh, wait, I mean, Kent State, you you knew that these teams were going to need to take steps back, and it was going to take some time to build back up. Um, you know, Akron and Kent State just have always been in that frontier for whatever reason. Nevada started off strong, but I don't think they, they have figured things out quite yet. But again, some of these teams, it's not a bad thing they're in this tier. You have a new coach in Jeff Choate, and he has a lot of exciting things planned for this program. I think that they'll be better in 2025. Just right now, they're trying to figure out how they build towards that future. Houston is kind of the same boat, a little bit different. Willie Fritz was always going to have to look towards the future, and that's what they're going to do. UCLA, kind of the same thing. Florida is not in a good spot right now. Billy Napier is obviously fighting for his job. They beat Mississippi State, scored Quite a bit of points, so that's a little bit better for them. And then there's Florida State. Florida State is having, obviously, a rough year, and uh, it's going to be a long year. But this is always going to be a season, for for me at least, Florida State was going to be a, a, in a down year. You knew you lost a ton of talent, and even though you brought in certain players in the transfer portal, you knew that 2025 was going to be the year that you rediscover your ability to compete for a conference title, maybe even a national title this year is not going to be that year, but it's obviously been very disappointing. And then Colorado State, that's been probably, I would say, the biggest disappointment of this entire group outside of, you know, Florida State. I think Florida, everyone expected to be here, but Colorado State is someone, a team that's been struggling and has not looked good. The passing attack is pretty bad. Torrey Horton has been non-existent, so that's a little bit disappointing. If you're a Rams fan and you'd like to see them bounce back a little bit, we're going to go to not looking good right now. These are teams that are could be in 2025, but also it's very hard to fit so many teams into certain tiers. So these guys are just right above this 2025 group. FIU is pretty close to 2025, which is usually where they belong. Uh, Louisiana Tech struggling quite a bit. That's not really surprising. They're at one and two, so... It's not too bad, but at the same time, you'd like to see them play a little bit better under Sonny Cumby. So we'll see what happens there. Marshall, not exactly looking great, if you ask my opinion. They have looked pretty rough under Charles Huff, though they did provide some level of resistance against certain teams that they've played. It's just you haven't seen them play at a high level, and, and that's been very disappointing. Old Dominion is 0-3, and, and they are a, a team that I think could be much better, but they I, I think they've been close. You look at the South Carolina game, they're very close there, so they have the ability to potentially win some of those games. You just haven't seen it. New Mexico is kind of in that same tier there where you, you're you 0 4 so you're, this could have been a surprise. I think that they started, you know, started the year against Montana State. You thought maybe you had something there. And you've seen flashes of what Bronco Mendenhall brings to the table. But similar to the 2025 teams, 
you are looking at a rebuild that's going to take some time. Same with San Diego State. Auburn is in this category because things are not looking good, especially at the quarterback position. And I think that Auburn fans aren't surprised necessarily that they're in this tier because you know what you expected from this team and you are simply not getting the performance specifically from the quarterback position. Peyton Thorne has not done a good job and you really haven't found a guy that can replace him or, or take over the spot from him. In this tier as well, TCU, not looking good. You just got absolutely waxed by SMU. You lost to UCF in disappointing fashion, and that's not great. You know, you have some some good things about this team. Josh Hoover looks pretty good. The posse attack, I would say, looks good. Savion Williams is going to be really fun to watch at the next level. But overall, as a team, not very good. North Carolina just got destroyed by James Madison at home 70 to 50. And that's why they're in this tier here, not looking good, not what you anticipated. This is still a three and one team. So again, we talked about before some of these teams can move up. North Carolina is one of those teams, but they got to figure some things out pretty quick. Purdue and Vanderbilt, Hawaii, those are three teams that are kind in this. You saw some potential and things have gone downhill quickly. Wisconsin is also in this tier. You thought maybe they'd put up a little bit of a better fight against Alabama, but Alabama ultimately did whatever they wanted in that game. Virginia Tech has been a big disappointment. I won't put them in the 2025 tier quite yet, but things are not going well for the Hokies, a team that a lot of people anticipated being much better than they are playing. Two and two is not what anyone anticipated. Same with North Carolina State. Two and two is not where they pictured being, but maybe C.J. Bailey is able to turn things around. App State has been a big disappointment I think people are talking about Sean Clark and his future with the program, but that's been very disappointing. Kansas at one and three, not the start that they wanted, but it's a Lance Lightbulb team. I feel like they're going to be in good hands going forward. Wake Forest also a little bit disappointing. The Ole Miss game and the uh, aftermath of that has been a talk of college football, but that has been a disappointing start for the Demon Deacons. Baylor as well. Dave Aranda is looking to keep his job. Last week's game, the absolute debacle against Colorado is not doing him any favors going on to to be determined these are teams that i'm not quite sure where to put them quite yet they're in this category because when you look at them north texas is a good example of that the wins that you have aren't really indicating anything but you also don't really know where to put them also you had a breakup but not looking good to be determined and then next year in terms of uh getting all these teams on it on this screen at one time central michigan i kind of a disappointment you probably put them in not looking good as well sam houston has been a little bit of a surprise a three and one start is kind of good for them but also like, who have you beaten that has looked like anything uh anything good new mexico state is one of those wins hawaii is one of those wins you just haven't seen much from them yet so maybe those will look better at the end of the year but we'll see buffalo kind of in that to, to be determined here the win last week very impressive georgia state also has a win over vanderbilt which is just still mind-blowing doesn't really make any sense but that's why georgia state is here we'll see what they truly are in this next few weeks when you look at the rest of the teams in this category louisiana had a tough loss against tulane we'll see if they're still in the running for the group five spot, probably not for the playoff, but they are still a fun team to watch. Ohio has been surprising. I thought they were going to take a step back, but they have not. Bowling Green had a close game against Texas A&M, so we'll see if they can build upon that going into this week. Oregon State's 3-1. and one. That's a very interesting start for the Beavers, but I think that there are some things that they have to sort out, and we will see how well they're able to do that heading into the next couple of weeks. West Virginia, I think, had the potential to be a really fun and exciting team. We just have not seen that yet. And I think that there are some limitations on this team that need to be figured out. Tulane, I think, could be a higher tier, but we will see meeting Louisiana in the close margin that it was, I don't think is where you want them to be. But this AAC race is pretty much wide open. Kentucky, obviously, you thought big things of Brock Vandergriff, but that has not played out quite yet either. The next year we're going to be need a run. This These are teams that are showing some promise, but they're going to have to go on a run if they're going to make 
anything happen in terms of a college football playoff run, a conference championship run, we will see. And I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying they need to do it. South Alabama has been so interesting under Major Applewhite. I think Gio Lopez is one of the more exciting group of five players that we didn't know about coming into this year. Texas Tech has obviously some struggles you almost lose in week one to an FCS team. That's very disappointing, but you've seen some exciting things from Bear Morton, that offense. Arkansas has been kind of all over the place. The game against Oklahoma State was an implosion of sorts, and the game against Auburn was a tough win. But again, I don't really know what we're going to see from Arkansas going forward. Maryland's also in that tier where you don't necessarily know if the Terps are a good team or what that's going to look like. It's going to be tough, even not in the Big Ten East anymore. It's still going to be difficult. Western Kentucky just upset Toledo. That was a good win for them. Georgia Southern is two and two, but I think they've shown some promise. There's just certain things that they must address in order to get things where they want to be. Texas A&M is in this tier for obvious reasons. There's been a ton of talent on this team. You just haven't found the right formula to uh, get things going to the level that you want. So that's been kind of frustrating, but you still have the talent at least to potentially make a run. ECU, it, it could be in a lower tier. They've been very surprising, though, after a disappointing season in 2023. So keep an eye on that team as well in the AAC. Oklahoma just got worked by Tennessee's def or defensive line and just their defense in general. Oklahoma's defense is really good. I think that that's one thing that they have going for them. They just have to figure out the quarterback situation. They're going to make a change. And if that works, the Sooners could be a very interesting team when it's all said and done. In this tier as well, SMU and Memphis are kind of in the same boat where they have disappointing losses. Memphis just lost to Navy after beating Florida State. SMU has a loss to BYU, which is looking... I don't want to say a loss is impressive, but it's more impressive than it was at the time. Nebraska just lost to Illinois. That's very disappointing. Washington has a loss to Washington State. So some of these teams you knew were going to need something to go right and needed to figure some things out. Maybe would take a little bit of a step back. Washington, obviously going through that coaching change, is going to be difficult as well as the talent that they lost. So that's something to keep an eye on going forward. What is that team going to look like? throughout the rest of the season. We're, again, four games in for some teams, and you learn something already, but also there's still some questions. Cincinnati has been, I think, better than expected, but if they're going to make a run in the Big 12, they need to play more consistently. Minnesota just lost in disappointing fashion to Iowa. I'm not really sure where the Gophers are at in terms of where P.J. Flex stands, but it's going to take a better effort from this team to compete for a bowl game as well as in the Big Ten. Virginia just had a big win over Coastal Carolina. I think they took care of business when a lot of people didn't expect them to, but that's been a really fun team to watch. I think that it'll be a team that's very interesting in ACC play, so we'll keep an eye on them. Michigan State and USF also need runs at disappointing games this past weekend, but I think that they have some interesting talent that you're going to want to keep an eye on going forward. Going on to the next tier is the surprise teams. Now, these teams aren't necessarily better than some of the teams in the need to run or to be determined category, but I wanted to put these teams in their own tier. Eastern Michigan, Army, Stanford, and Navy. These are teams that I think a lot of people expected to have some struggles, and they have exceeded expectations. Navy and Army are both undefeated. Stanford just beat Syracuse on the road. That was very impressive. Eastern Michigan, Chris Creighton deserves so much credit for what he has done there. All he does is exceed expectations, and he's doing that once again. ULM has been a surprise. Yes, they're only 2-1, and one, but you also saw a team that was expected to be at the bottom of the Sun Belt, and they very much could still end up there. But so far, a 2-1 and one start isn't what anybody anticipated that UAB win was very impressive. Toledo, even with the loss to Western Kentucky, they did beat Mississippi State on the road in impressive fashion. So that's something that they have going for them. It's just that, obviously, the loss to Western Kentucky, which they had the ball inside the 20 through an interception to end the game this past weekend. That was disappointing. Georgia Tech, despite the fact that they're now 3-2, and two, was a surprise. I think that they were an exciting team in the first few games, and 
some of that excitement has worn off, but still a surprise team so far this year. Boston College has exceeded expectations under Bill O'Brien. Had a very good game against Michigan State this past weekend. They have done a good job. They also beat Florida State. I mean, Florida State, maybe not as impressive of a win, but they did beat the Seminoles on the road. And that was very impressive. The rushing attack looks very good under with Thomas Castellanos. So keep an eye on that team in the ACC. Costa Carolina got things off to with an explosive start against Jacksonville State. And they are doing a really good job of competing with uh, the talent that they have there. They're a team to watch in the Sun Belt. Going along with those other teams that surprise us now, Northern Illinois just lost to Buffalo, so that's very disappointing. But they do have a win over Notre Dame on the road. Again, a lot of these wins are coming on the road from this group of five uh, group, and that's a very exciting group to watch. Syracuse has been a surprise despite the loss to Stanford. Al McCord has been really fun to watch. That passing attack looks very good. And I think that they'll still be a better team than we anticipate, but obviously that loss hurts a little bit more than maybe you wanted. Duke is another one of those teams. Undefeated. I don't think a lot of people anticipated that coming into this week, but here they are. Same with BYU. The fact that they beat Kansas State at home this past weekend in, I wouldn't say dominant fashion, but they definitely handled business. That was a very impressive win for the Cougars. Pitt has been exciting as well. This is a team that I think has a lot of differences from their previous year efforts, and the offense is going to be one of them. I think when you look at Eli Holstein, what he's brought to the table, he's made this team much better, and they're a very fun team to watch. South Carolina and, and Illinois, and or really the rest of you, Illinois is a little bit different in terms of they just beat Nebraska. They are undefeated still. South Carolina, Cal, and Arizona State all have one loss, but they have been surprising nonetheless. I think that they are at different levels of surprising, but they have been surprises regardless the next group is a fun group now this is a group that doesn't necessarily mean that they're again better than anyone else or could be in a different tier but it's the we have a hulk and it's a tier that includes three teams and there are three teams that have guys that have been absolutely dominant and maybe not necessarily getting a ton of help boise state is going to get things started ashton Gente is an absolute monster and nobody seems to have an answer for him he has been absolutely Phenomenal for this Boise State team. Now, this is a Boise State team that nearly stunned Oregon on the road, and they have their sights set on the college football playoff. So they could be in a higher tier, but right now you had to highlight what Ashton Gentry has done. Arizona has been disappointing. Arizona has not been the team that we expected them to be. They probably would honestly be in the not looking good phase if I didn't have this tier uh, because we don't have an answer for anyone that's not there are teams that are covering Tedero McMillan. Tedero McMillan is an absolute monster. There's not a single person on Arizona right now that has more than hundred yards receiving besides him. He has over 400 yards receiving this year. And you kind of knew that was going to be a potential issue. And so far, Arizona has not found an answer for that. The last team in this tier is San Jose state. Now, if you don't watch San Jose state, I highly recommend it. They nearly beat Washington state on the road. Nick Nash has been an absolute stud for this team. He is basically the group of five version of Tedero of McMillan. And while McMillan gets so much of the love, Nick Nash is really fun to watch. If you have not watched him yet, I highly recommend it. But those are the three teams that have absolute studs who aren't necessarily getting the help that maybe they need. Now, teams that have playoff potential, this is where I kind of struggled. Iowa definitely has the potential because of their schedule. I don't think that Iowa State loss looks good on their resume, but I think that Iowa State is exceeding expectations as well, so maybe it looks better than I anticipate. Colorado is still very much a playoff potential team as of right now. Now, you, if you project it, that's a different video that you need to talk about. That's a different conversation. Colorado is definitely a team that is in the running for a Big 12 title. It's going to take some time. I think that there definitely needs to be some things sorted out, but as of right now, they are in that conversation, whether people like it or not. The other team to keep an eye on, Notre Dame. Now, I know people are going to get mad because you lost to Northern Illinois. However, in the 12-team playoff, you are allowed to lose a game and still be in that playoff conversation. I know some people aren't going to like that, but that just is what it is. Notre Dame is still very much in that conversation. One loss does not ruin your season. Moving next to LSU. LSU is kind of the same boat here. You lose 
to USC in that first game, but you have found ways to bounce back and you sit at three and one. This is very much a team that can make a run towards the playoff. They can get, again, this is just making the playoff. I'm not calling them contenders for a national championship uh, for, or, or for a title. LSU is a team that has a very exciting offense. Garrett Nussmeyer has been as advertised. Losing Harold Perkins definitely hurts. So I think that if anything, they go down. But right now, this is a team that has the potential to make a run to the playoff. James Madison with an absolute emphatic win over North Carolina on the road, 70 to 50. They are undefeated. That has been a surprise. They are very much in that conversation to be the group of five candidate to make it to the college football playoff. And their former coach, Kurt Signetti, is at Indiana, who is absolutely surprising everybody in college football. I think we expected them to be better, but I don't know if anybody anticipated a 4-0 start. They have looked really good. Curtis Rourke has looked very comfortable in this new system, and that defense is playing with a ton of energy. Liberty has not looked great. I'll say that. They have not looked good, and they're dealing with some injuries. That doesn't help but they are going to still be in that playoff potential tier because they have not lost a game and they have a schedule. Now they are going this, I should say the schedule that it allows them to go undefeated. Now they do need some help, even if they do go undefeated, but they are still in that conversation. Iowa state. We talked about before the win over Iowa was huge. And again, this is a team that continues exceeding expectations. They're three, no team. They've looked pretty good. I think that they are, there are certain things that they need to do better. I think the passing attack has found its footing. And I think that the defense has figured some things out as well. Iowa state is definitely in that conversation for a big 12 title. Texas state, despite the lost Arizona state is still in that playoff potential conversation. It's not looking as good as it once did, or if he were three and but Texas state is still a very explosive team. It could be a big problem uh, for the rest of the group of five going on to Fresno state. Fresno state has the loss to Michigan, which maybe didn't look as good right off the bat, but it is looking better now that they beat USC. So Fresno state is a team that plays with a ton of energy and they have a schedule that could allow them to sneak in over some of these other teams, but the Mountain West is going to be very competitive. That's going to be a tough schedule to navigate. Rutgers is a surprise team as well at 3-0. They have been a team that I think a lot of people expected to be a surprise. I don't necessarily know if you can call them a surprise anymore, but that's a team to definitely keep an eye on when it comes to the Big Ten. Washington State has been a big surprise for everyone. The the Pac-12, one of two teams in the Pac-12, slash Mountain West. They're 4-0. They have a big game coming up this weekend against Boise State. That will determine a lot for both teams. USC, despite the loss to Michigan, is still very much in that playoff conversation. I'm not saying they're going to be a contender for a title, but they are still in the running because you play in the Big Ten. It's going to allow you to lose a game like that and still be in that conversation. Oklahoma State, same thing. You lose to Utah. Very disappointing if you are an Oklahoma State fan. However, this is still very much a team that can make a run to the college football playoff. It's just going to take uh, winning, probably winning out, as well as getting a little bit of help from somebody else. Kansas State, kind of the same thing. Your season's not over because you lost to BYU, but you definitely need to get things on the right track and maybe get a little bit of help from somebody ahead of you. Clemson is still in that playoff contenders list despite the loss to Georgia. I think a lot of people wrote off Clemson right off the bat because they lost to Georgia, but Georgia is still a good football team and they are going to beat a lot of teams like that. Clemson obviously is trying to figure out their offense, what it can do and how it can be better. But this is still a team that I think is very much in playoff contention, despite what a lot of people might say. Michigan with a big win over USC. That was a surprise for sure. They are in that conversation as well. Louisville is undefeated. They're in that conversation. They are a playoff contender in the ACC. Now, when you do this stuff early in the season, there are going to be teams that are very much in this conversation. They are are, are going to be better than expected. And as the season progresses, the list of playoff contenders obviously is going to dwindle but you have quite a few teams that are still very much in that conversation. UCF with a huge game coming up against Colorado. We talked about that. The Knights are looking very good under Gus Malzahn. Just got to limit those slow starts that we saw last week. UNLV has been a surprise. I think a lot of people expected them to take a little bit of a step back, but they are undefeated. They just beat Kansas 
two weeks ago. They have looked really good under that offense run by Brennan Marion. Barry Odom deserves a lot of credit for what he's done. Missouri survived a scare against Vanderbilt. That is a team that is looking to bounce back in a big way over the next couple of weeks, and they are still in contention to be a playoff team. It's just a matter of, again, you have to avoid a loss or a letdown game. A loss doesn't end your season, like I said before, but Missouri did not look good last week. They need to figure that out pretty quick. Oregon is another team that has not looked good. They've had two games that were a little bit disappointing, but then you bounce back in a big way with a big win over Oregon State. That's a team that you expected to beat, but Oregon did that in dominant fashion. Still undefeated, though. Utah had a big win. You're obviously trying to figure out what the Cam Rising situation looks like. That's going to be an interesting situation to monitor once again. But they found a way to win on the road against Oklahoma State. That's a big win. If Isaac Wilson truly is the guy that can take over, we feel like they're in good hands. Alabama has a big game against Georgia this weekend. That is going to be a, an absolute incredible matchup. And we'll see how they can handle things. Can Jalen Milrow expose that Georgia defense, or is he going to have some struggles? Ole Miss has been putting up points against everyone. Anytime, anywhere, they are going to do that. It'll be fun to see what they can do against SEC play this year. They look really good so far this year. Penn State, same thing. That offense has looked a lot better now that Andy Koltanicki is running that show, and you feel pretty good about where the Nittany Lions sit going forward. Georgia is going to have... Uh, a lot of say in their fate as well. We talked about that big game coming up against Alabama. They are going to be a fun team to watch. Been dominant at times and also have struggled against the likes of Kentucky. Tennessee is a team that's very much in that conversation as well. Had a big win over Oklahoma this past weekend. They have looked really good. Nico I. Maliava is going to be a Heisman contender, and that defense is going to play lights out, I think, for quite some time here. Miami has looked really good. Cam Ward has been the best addition via the transfer portal. That passing attack is very dangerous. That offense is explosive. And the Hurricanes are definitely going to be in contention for a playoffs, but and definitely in contention for a potential national title. Ohio State's offense, same thing. You brought in Will Howard to run the show. You bring in Quinn Chad Judkins to play running back. This is an offense that is firing on all cylinders right now, and it'll be fun to see how they keep that going. And then finally, Texas. Everyone knows that Texas is a contender. Obviously, the status of Quinn Ewers is going to be up in the air for now, but I think that you're still in good hands if you are the Texas Longhorns. Arch Manning is going to run the show for a while. You don't necessarily need Quinn Ewers to come back with that schedule, but eventually he will come back, and this is still a team that is very much in contention for a college football playoff spot, as well as a national championship. That is the power rankings there for through week four. And you're looking at a very exciting season that is yet to play out. We've already seen some upsets. We've already seen some really exciting things. And college football really is just getting started.